So for this week's Challenge Wednesday, we have our patient Vicky, is, and Vicky is being treated in the hospital for a severe bacterial infection. The patient's recent lab values read hemoglobin 13 grams per deciliter. The white blood cells are 5.5 uh, cells per microliter. You got platelets are 45 cells per microliter, and then you have an LDL of 105 milligrams per deciliter. Which of the following is the best course of action? So we have A, continue with treatment without exercise restrictions. All right, B is hold treatment, document the abnormal white blood cell count. C is continue with treatment, avoid prolonged stretching and resistive exercise. And then D is whole treatment, document the abnormal platelet count, and request an immediate transfusion. All right, so we got quite a bit, a lot of information in these answer choice, so we're going to have to break this one down, baby. All right, so at the top here, we have Vicky is being treated in the hospital for this bacterial infection. All right, pretty straightforward. In the hospital, bacterial infection, we know already just from me reading it the first time that white blood cells is something that we want to pay attention to, right? I mean, it's a part of the immune system. So let's go to the next sentence. It says, the patient's recent lab values read hemoglobin 13 grams per deciliter. So let's just go ahead and knock down these lab values as we move along, all right? Let's go ahead and do that. So the first thing is hemoglobin 13 grams per deciliter. Now, in order for us to make any decisions here, we got to know what the normal values are first. Please know this for the MPT. Please know it. All right. So we have a female here and women usually are in between 12 and 16 grams per deciliter, depending on the resource. But what you need to know is about 12 to 16. Are we within that? for hemoglobin right now? Yes, we are, 13 grams per deciliter. I'm not really worried about that. Moving on to the next, it says white blood cells are 5.5 cells per microliter. All right, 5.5 times 10 to the ninth power cells per liter, all right? So when I look at that value, I have to still understand what is considered the normal range. Now, depending on the resource, It'll be about five to 10 of these cells per microliter. We got 5.5 right now. And so are we within normal ranges? I would say so. Even though our patient has bacterial infection, we're still within normal ranges here. I'm not too worried about that. Let's continue down the line. The platelets are 45 cells per microliter, 45,000 cells per microliter. Hmm. Now, is that normal? Because, see, the normal ranges are what? Go ahead and s slow down the car. Stop at the stop sign. Don't pass through it. Tell me what is the normal value for platelets. You should be saying 150,000 to 400,000. 450,000 is sometimes what you'll catch in some of your resources. But about 150,000 to 450,000 cells per microliter is what we're looking at. Now. The question here says 45,000. That's significantly below. So we know that there's a problem there. So let's just make that mental note. We're going to continue down the line. It says, and an LDL of 105 milligrams per deciliter. Well, the normal value where we really would want our patient is below 100 milligrams per deciliter, but they have 105. Is that a really big deal right now? Not really. I mean, we want them to be lower, to be healthy, but it's not a big deal for this question. So the final sentence of the question, the question stem says, which of the following is the best course of action? We know now that the platelets is significantly low. So let's look at our first answer choice. It says, A, continue with treatment without exercise restrictions. Well, we know that the platelets are a problem right now. We don't want to just continue with treatment without exercise restrictions because the platelets are responsible for what? Come on, tell me. What are the platelets responsible for? They're, re they're responsible for clotting, right? And so if they are at a low amount in the body, we know that this patient's at risk for significant bleeding, you know, if they get cut, or if they're exercising and they're breaking down tissues on the inside of their body, it's a chance that we get a lot of internal bleeding as well. So I don't want to just continue with treatment without ex uh, without exercise restrictions. Nah, that's, that's not something we want to do here. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. Move down the line. It says, 
whole treatment and document the abnormal white blood cell count. That's what B says. Hmm. Well, I don't want a whole treatment. And th there's no need to document abnormal white blood cell count because <laughs> the white blood cells are normal, right? So let's go ahead and just knock that one out really quickly. Let's go down to C. C says continue with treatment and avoid prolonged stretching and resistive exercise. Now the question to you is, if a patient has 45,000 cells per microliter for their platelets, should we continue with the treatment or not? The answer to that is yes, we can continue with treatment as long as there are some restrictions. And we should be avoiding things like prolonged stretching and resistive exercises. How do I know that? Well, think about it this way. We already said that the platelets were in charge of clotting, right? Stopping bleeding. What's the one thing that resistive exercise tends to do, especially things like eccentric exercise? Tell me. What does resistive exercise really do? You should be saying, well, it breaks down muscle tissue. It breaks it down and so that it can continue to build and build and build. And that's called hypertrophy, right? So here's the deal. We don't want to start causing damage on the inside of the body because we don't have the platelets in order to clot. So that's the reason why we wouldn't want to do resistive training. Also, prolonged stretching is the same thing. We would not want to do that. Why? We don't want to cause tearing or damage to the muscle tissue. I love this answer. Continue with treatment, but avoid prolonged stretching and resistive exercise. That's actually a part of the precautions, the exercise guidelines that a PT is supposed to know. If your patient's between 30,000 and 50,000 platelets, you should be continuing with treatment, but avoiding prolonged stretching and resistive exercise. But hold on a minute. We ain't done yet. We got to look at D. D says hold treatment, can uh, document the abnormal platelet count, and request immediate transfusion. All right. Well, I told you all that we can go along with treatment. Like, we can still treat this patient. We can do things like active range of motion, cycling. The patient could swim. They could even do submax isometrics. But we just don't want them to do things like prolonged stretching or heavy resistive exercises or anything like that. So I already don't like D for that reason. I like the fact that we want to document the abnormal platelet count. Okay, cool. The other piece of this answer I don't like, though, is request an immediate transfusion. Well, see, here's the thing. Is that the scope of the physical therapist? Does the physical therapist request an immediate transfusion? I already don't like that part. But also with platelet count, usually they're not rushing to necessarily transfuse a patient until they start to get below 10,000 cells per microliter. So I don't like D. I just don't feel like it is the best answer here. And that leaves us with our final answer of C. Continue with treatment and avoid prolonged stretching and resistive exercise. Congratulations to those of you who got this answer correct. For those of you who didn't, you know, these are the lab values that are really important, like platelets, white blood cells, uh, LDL, hemoglobin. These come up all the time. Why? They are really important for the PT to know when we're talking about exercise guidelines. So you've got to make sure that you're prepared for this. For the April 23rd exam coming up, even if you're taking it in July or October, these are super important for you to know. I do not want to leave you with that. So those of you who are on the podcast right now, you can go ahead and stop your car, click your phone, go into the show notes and get my cheat sheet. I'm going to have for you the lab values that I would know for the MPTE. And I'm going to tell you what the PT should be thinking about your exercise guidelines when you see abnormal values. If that's something you want, go into those show notes and click the link in there. For those of you here with me right now, baby, I know that winning is in your bloodline. And that's exactly what I want you to put in the comment box right now. Winning is in my bloodline, baby. Don't play with me. Put it down right now. Click the like, click the love button. Let's freaking celebrate another great challenge Wednesday. Congratulations, y'all.